I have a drum track I have recorded and it includes kick drum, snare drum, three toms, two floor toms, and some overhead mics. And what I'm going to do is replace the uh, kick, snare, and all the toms with samples from Drumagog. And this will eliminate the need for me to use a noise gate, um, an equalizer, reverb, plugins, things like that. So what I'm going to do is solo the kick drum here, start with that, um, loop it. I'm using Acoustica's Mixcraft as the DAW host. And we'll play a little bit of that so you can hear the kick drum uh, original sound. Notice you can hear the rest of the drum kit bleed through that microphone. So what we'll do is uh, add Drumagog and click the edit button. And Drumagog comes with um, some some samples and you can purchase other samples from the from the website to download and use with the software. I also use a lot of my own. For instance, these kits here that I've uh, recorded here in the studio. What I'm going to do is use one of the bass drums that came uh, with Drumagog's uh, sample kit. And I'm going to double click which then sets up the uh, that particular sample for this channel. Then I'll play. You can use this blend slider to go back and hear the original. And notice that the um, trigger, it's triggering a little too much. The sensitivity is too high, so we'll drag the sensitivity level up above those what I call ghost hits and that should take care of the problem. Pull the resolution down a little bit. Also helps eliminate double hits. Okay, and then we'll listen to the difference. Notice the rest of the kit is not bleeding through at all now. We have a completely clean kick drum track. So I will save that and we'll move on to the snare. Add an instance of Drumagog to the snare track as well. Pull that up and we'll choose a, a snare drum. Let it play and, and choose a, a snare drum by listening to a couple different ones. Okay, I like that one. Again, let's adjust the sensitivity. And the resolution. Compare it to the original. You can really hear the rest of the kit through that snare mic, so that's going to clean up this, this drum recording significantly. And I would like some reverb on that, so I'm going to click the effects button, turn on the convolution reverb, and select something appropriate. I tend to like larger reverbs, like a hall, so let's try the deep hall. Adjust the mix here. All reverb, all original signal. That sounds pretty good. Now, just by soloing the kick and the snare, it's going to sound much better than it did without Drumagog.
very nice. And we'll move on to the first tom. And find a spot in the recording that I used the tom. There we go. Notice again, you can hear the bleed through of the rest of the kit, but also there's, I hear a noise uh, which sounds like, uh, like I hit the microphone with the stick or maybe the microphone was uh, being overloaded, a little bit of a, a gain overload. So we'll bring up Drumagog. And for this, I'm going to use one of my own samples off of this Tama Swing Star kit. Try the 12 inch. Adjust the sensitivity. Add some reverb. on to the next tom and add the sample adjust the sensitivity and add my reverb okay move on to the third tom adjust my loop here a little bit Another instance of Dromagog. Play that. Adjust the sensitivity. Now by using my own samples, one thing I am not getting is the dynamic multi-samples. Notice that over here to the right, the dynamic multi-samples light is, is not on. But if we were to go back and look at the kick or the snare where I did use the GOG samples that came with the program, you'll notice that is lit up and there's, by choosing this GOG file sample, you have multiple instances um, of that kick drum and they uh, are all recorded at different um, hit strengths and uh, gives it more of a, a human feel and notice when I play this it's going to randomly select those so it's not so mechanical sounding okay we'll move on to the first floor tom Adjust the sensitivity. And adjust the resolution. And I think there's a hit there that we're not hearing. Looks like there's supposed to be two hits, but we'll take a listen by using the blend slider yep it's supposed to be two so what we'll do is pull the sensitivity down a little bit there we go add my reverb 
and move on to the second floor tom let's find a place where I hit it there we go pull up drummer gog and since I don't have any more toms in that particular kit I'll just use one of my other ones add the reverb Now we should have a pretty good sounding drum kit, so we'll play a little bit of that. Much better. We'll pull those back off just to hear the difference. Let's just say the kick and the snare. It's already obvious that it's much better with Drumagog. Of course, you can tweak everything the way you like it. The uh, settings within Drumagog that I find I use most are sensitivity, resolution, and the transient detail. Uh, this can help uh, immensely if you, for example, have a flam you've done on a tom and it's not coming through as a flam. Maybe it's coming through as just a single hit you would then adjust the resolution further to the right to uh, catch more of uh, the actual real close notes that would also uh, work great with with uh, double bass beats such as uh, death metal blast beats things like that and if you're getting too much if you you're hitting the drum one time and you're getting two uh, hits out of it you can then adjust the resolution down to the left and that will take care of that Okay, here's something fun. Um, take a listen to this drum loop. This is just going to be kick, snare, and hi-hat. Basically, it sounds like a beginner drummer. Let me pull up the uh, hi-hat in Drumagog. I'll solo that, and we'll play it, and I'll blend it back to the original signal. That's me using a pen on a bottle. The snare, that's me using a pen on a CD case and the kick drum that's my foot on a record sleeve on the floor Pretty amazing. 